Another project that we want to show you is another space saving storage idea that we had a while back. So we have this wall in the middle of the RV that separates the living space from the bedroom. And the bed is right here and there's a gap between the two. Well, it's not very big and it's not really big enough to put anything, but we found these. Now these racks are designed to kind of go in that space in the kitchen between the refrigerator and the cabinets or something like that. So that's kind of what they're designed for. But we uh, thought they were the perfect size for shoes in here. Now they came originally three tiers tall. We took one off because that was too tall for the space. So we took one off. They were great. They also had wheels on them. Then of course they roll all over the RV. So we just took them off and let them slide. And they do work well for shoes, unless you're like me and you've got ginormous honking feet, in which case my shoes don't really fit yeah. very well in them. So plus like, and those bend your hiking shoes. Yeah. My tennis shoes or hiking shoes, or I oftentimes have maybe one pair of nice shoes in the RV in case we have a date night out or some reason to go someplace where I need to be a little more dressed up. And those did not fit well at all in the bottom. I tried standing them up and that works a little bit at an angle. So I can get maybe four shoes across in here, but it's just kind of awkward for my shoes. So, Oh, so Violence. Oh. But we came up with something new. I said, well, that, that was the perfect idea. We just needed something that was a little more custom fit for what we needed. So today I'm going to show you how to make a shoe rack. Ah. And this is one that we made. It's um, made of cedar. It is cedar. So that's helpful also because it might help keep some of our pesky, creepy crawlies away. And it's a little bit wider, <laughs> so my there. shoes will fit in it width-wise, which is fantastic. And there's, how much wiggle room would you say there is um, there now? I've got maybe an inch on each side of clearance. And I think we did this whole project for about $50 to make two of them. One for Michelle on her side of the bed, one for me over on my side of the bed. Um, the design on this first one did not go exactly the way I planned, so I'm going to make some modifications to it when I build the second one, which is what I'm going to show you how to build right now. It is time to build this shoebox to put it together. So when I made my original design, I just decided to use one by fours uh, and we decided on cedar just because we know that it's uh, versatile and we know that it also looks nice and is not too expensive. So I just built basically two boxes out of the one by fours and then I attached them together with two uprights. Just sketched the whole thing out based on the dimensions that we had. But after I got this first one put together, I decided that I could probably uh, refine that design a little bit. So as I make the second one here today, I'm gonna use that new design, which is gonna take uh, cut out a couple of pieces of wood, which will help lighten the weight up just a little bit and uh, even make a little bit more space inside the box for the shoes. Now, let me start off by saying, I am not a woodworker, I am not a, um, a builder. I just do this as a hobby, so uh, I'm sure there's a better way of doing this. This is the way I did it, so take it for what it's worth. So let's get started. I have measured and cut all of my wood. And uh, as you notice, I measured once for my lengths and then I kind of use that as a gauge. So that way they all end up being nice and square. You can see here, I've just set the pieces the way they're going to end up being put together. So I've got the two pieces side by side for the bottom of the box and then the two tall pieces standing up on the side. And then the sides will just be here and screwed in to the ends. And then the second box goes up here at the top. Now it's time to sand the blocks down so that all the edges are smooth and then we can start putting it all together. ready to start putting things together. I got everything sanded down. By the way, I bought a, a nice high uh, grade of 
wood. So it already came finished on one side. The back side is a little bit rough. So I just had to sand really the cut edges and a few places where it was a little bit rough on some of the edges. I just sanded those down, but otherwise it was pretty clean. So now in order to get my boxes held together, I need to put a couple of mending braces on the bottom of each one. So I'm just gonna put those across the bottom and that'll hold the base of each shoebox together. Now, to put the whole thing together, I'm gonna to just flip this over. I want that on the bottom so that it's not visible. I'm gonna take my two sidewall pieces and put them on the sides. And then I'm gonna just screw this upright piece into the sides. Now, before I do this, I do need to pre-drill all my holes. Um, this wood is relatively dry and I don't want it to split, especially since I'm going in close to the edges. Uh, so I'm gonna just pre-drill all of my holes so that everything's ready to go and then I'll just zip it in together. I am using some trim finish screws that have a really small head on them so that they don't show, uh, they're not really obtrusive and the whole thing should just look a little bit nicer. The base of the box is now completed. So I'm ready to put in the next layer, which is gonna go up here at the very top. So I just have to get those pieces put in. So I'll pre-drill my holes put all of that in and put in the two bottom pieces once I get them mended together. at this point so it is technically finished however there's a couple of other little things that we need to take care of here so if I wanted to make a really finished look here I would take uh, all of these screw holes and I'd fill them with wood putty but we've decided we're gonna leave this raw at least for the time being so we kind of like the look of the natural cedar so we're not gonna stain it which means I don't really want to put wood putty in there because that would make those maybe look a little bit more obvious. But I could fill all those uh, screw holes in with wood putty, stain the whole thing and have a, or paint it and have a finished look uh, to match the RV. We decided to leave it natural wood, although there may be an update a little bit later uh, this summer when we decide that we we're going to paint these to have them look. Now, the last thing I need to put on the bottom is uh, a slide. So in order to help this to slide on the floor of the RV without scratching it, especially with these mending plates on here, I purchased a couple of felt pads and these are called heavy duty felt blankets. Um, they're not really a blanket, but as soon as I get the package open, I'll show it to you. But what they are is a big thick piece of felt that is adhesive on the bottom. So I'm just gonna stick it right here on the edge on each side and then that way it'll slide nice and smoothly on our RV floor. Uh, we have a um, laminate, or not laminate floor, but a uh, vinyl floor in our RV. If I had carpet, I would probably put a hard plastic glider on the bottom of these to help them slide on the carpet so it wouldn't catch. So that's the only thing left to do. And we are all finished. Now, if I decide, this seems very sturdy to me right now, but if I decide that maybe it's getting a little rickety, uh, maybe the screws aren't holding quite as well as I wanted them to, I could go in and add some angle brackets down here, some angle, angle braces here and on the inside or on the inside of both shelves if I wanted it to be a little bit more hidden. But I think this is gonna be a nice uh, addition to the RV. And I think I'm gonna go back and fix the first one I made and take off those two side brackets just to make the whole thing fit a little bit better. The project's all finished. I have the shoe racks installed in the RV. They're not really installed, they're just set in place. But here's where they fit, right here by our bed. Now I have to, in order to get it completely out, I had to do a little bit of wiggling, but it doesn't need to come out anyway. And here are some of the shoes that'll end up going in here. I've got enough width for another pair of my long size 12 shoes to fit inside. 
And of course I can put two pairs on the bottom and depending on how I stack them, I might even be able to go a little bit higher than that uh, if I stand them up. If you have smaller feet, you can get a lot more storage in here because these would stand up inside and you could probably get like four pairs across. Michelle needs four pairs across. And my flip-flops that are thinner and are a little more bendable will probably fit like that for the summer. So there's another project all completed. Like I said, we might uh, check out our Instagram over the summer if we decide that we're gonna stain these or paint them, we'll put an updated photo in there. But uh, this is done for now at least. Project all finished. Did I hear all finished? You did hear all finished. I hear all finished.